Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Let's get started. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for everything that you do. Father, I just pray that every word that comes out of my mouth is from heaven through me. I am your instrument. Your people want to hear you. And the people who don't know you, I guess, since they're watching this video, they want to hear you too. I pray that you would use these lips. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I've been trying really hard to avoid this topic. Not really hard, but I've just been trying to ignore it. Just like, ah, stuff happens in the world all the time. You know, this is just one of those, another thing. COVID-19 coronavirus. That's the topic for this sermon. And actually, I just didn't really have much material. Um, one of them was, I, I think a lot of pastors aren't preaching on this because it's very skeptical. There was another prophet preaching on something like this. It's like, oh, the virus is going to go away on this particular date. I don't know how true that is. If it doesn't come true, that's a false prophet. But um, I don't want to get into that. What I am going to get into is this COVID virus and why it's happening. And one of the things that, just like in my prayer sessions every morning, I'm just talking to God, how I'm talking to you right now, just being honest about my emotions, the things that are on my mind, and pretty much needing everything that I can think of without being repetitious. Like, thank you, God, for today. Da, 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 One, two, three, four, five. This is my list that I pray every day. And then another day. This is my list I pray every day. It's not a real prayer. You need to actually pray. You need to talk to him like he's in the room. You need to talk to him like he re really exists and he's not that piece of furniture that you keep looking at. So with that being said, I was just in my prayer. I been just praying for protection in my family. A lot of pastors, I think, for the safe part, are praying for the protection of their families and friends and healing and all this stuff. And I was just praying, just, God, you know, let your will be done. You know, as Jesus said, let your will be done. We accept whatever your plans are. We accept whatever your will is. We will follow you wherever you lead us, even if we don't like it. One of the things that me and my wife were speaking about today is people will go to churches to hear what they want to hear, not hear what they need to hear. They follow the teachings of whatever they want to hear. You see, and I'm never going to teach you that. And that's why my messages come off so powerfully, I believe, because I'm always going to tell you the truth because the truth is what you need and the truth is going to heal you and the truth is going to set you free and this truth is going to just bless you. But a lie will wither away. You may have a bunch of friends who don't actually like you. You may, you may be surrounded in unprofitable areas, but you know what? I'd rather have one honest, good friend who has integrity, who I don't like when he or she preaches truth into my life than have a liar who laughs out every single one of my jokes, who I have a phenomenal time with, but the moment that trials come into my life, they're nowhere to be found. And that is not the God that I serve. And that is not the friends or the family or the wife or the kids that I want to be around. I want to be around people who are going to be, who are going to stick with me through the thick and thin. And this is that trial that we are entering into the season of life. And the Lord is saying this, he's saying, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. You know why? Because the one thing that he said to me, to tell you, to tell everyone, whoever has ears, let them hear. Whoever has eyes, let them see. Whoever understands, let them heed to what comes out of these lips today. Forgive each other just as Christ has forgiven you. Jesus died for every sin in the entire world. He was crucified he was martyred. He was hanged on a cross. He was beaten with many stripes and lashings. And he was completely innocent. 100%. He did not do one thing wrong against you or I or anyone. He was completely 
holy and perfect and still is completely holy and perfect, but he died on our behalf. You see, a lot of us like to think that we're innocent of something that we did was wrong when we're clearly all sinful and we're clearly all wrong in the eyes of God. Who can stand before God on that last day and say, I was innocent, I am pure, my motives, my heart, nobody. And we all fall short of the standard every day. The message about the coronavirus is based on it's happening. The wrath of God is poured out from heaven on earth on all people for multiple different sins. Right now, everyone is standing guilty before God, living guilty before God. People have anger in their life. They have frustration. They have anxiety. All of this is the wrath of God being poured out on humanity. Cancer, this coronavirus, every single thing that causes people to not be to have real joy, have real peace, have to be really kind. All these things are caused simply by sin. That's the wrath of God. You are living in the wrath of God. You have anger in your life. You have not peace in your life. Are you anxious? Do you have the coronavirus? Whatever you have, cancer. It's all the wrath of God resting on you right now. Resting on the people in the world. Resting on your family members, on your friends. That's the wrath from heaven on all ungodliness. And he says this, if you want to be healed, you have to ask for my forgiveness. You sinned and trespassed against me, a holy, perfect God. And I despise and I hate sin. I love you. That's why I sent my son to forgive you of your sin, but you're not receiving the gift. So you're still living in your sin. The message today about the coronavirus is about unforgiveness. You can't forgive anyone unless you've been forgiven by God. Oh, I forgave this person. I'm not going to get this disease or I'm not going to, this is not going to happen to me. You can't forgive unless you receive the gift from heaven. God will not accept your offering until you accept what he's offered you. He's offered you the blood of Jesus that cleanses you from all illnesses and disease and pain and affliction and demonic bondage. A lot of you guys are living in sin and you have demons in your life who are controlling your entire life, your thoughts, controlling your actions, your motives. And the moment that someone who's preaching you the gospel. I'm not preaching you no lukewarm gospel. I'm not preaching you no buttered up gospel. I'm preaching you the entire truth. And their truth is this, you're living in sin. So the wrath of God is poured out on heaven on you right now, resting on your life. I'm not going to say just trust in the Lord. Yes, that's part of it. Trust in the message of the Lord. Yes, that is the foundational truth. But if you trust him, then you're going to repent. The Lord said, you guys are praying to me all day, every day about healing your land. But the one thing that you won't do is forgive each other. You keep talking about, oh, I forgive this person. You still talk about the issue over and over and over and over again. Leave your gift at the altar. Be reconciled to your brother, your neighbor, your sister, your father, your mother, whoever hurt you in your life. And then come offer your gift to me. Then come pray to me. Don't just come pray to me and ask me. I'm not your genie, first off. I'm not your piece of furniture in your house that you pray to and look to. I'm not your repetitious prayers that you pray, the same thing over and over and over again, and you pretend that you, there's just something that pleases you. It pleases you. It's just like, oh, I prayed today. It makes me feel good. But that wasn't a real, pr real prayer. You pray the same thing every day, lunch, breakfast, and dinner. You don't actually talk to me like I'm in the room. You don't actually believe that I'm in the room watching you. You don't think about me any time in your life. The only time you think about me is when you need something. I'm your rebound relationship. I'm your rebound God. You go to all your other gods and then I'm your rebound. 
And if, and if all your plans fail, which they usually do fail, you come to me and say, oh, can you do this for me? But you come to me with your plans and your will for your life. Be like, God, I want you to do this. This is my plan. All these other gods or people that I went to, didn't, it didn't work out with them. So maybe if I come to you, you will make my plans work out for me. And God's saying, no. You'll make this coronavirus go away. You'll make everything good. If I just come and pray to you, if I just talk to you, I went to all these other people and they said, no. What makes you think I'm going to say yes? First off, all those gods are idols. They're not real. They're they're controlled by demons. They're your God. Your celebrities can't heal you or fix the world. Your politicians can't fix the world. None of your government, nobody can fix it. Only I can fix it. But instead of humbling yourself and abandoning your idolatry, abandoning your ways of worship, your American lifestyle, all these things. Why don't you come and live for me? Live for my purpose. Live for what I have for you. Your life, your nation, your entire country, your towns and your cities and your clans and whatever your little groups are, they're falling apart, not because of me. I've been trying to protect you from yourself. They're falling apart because of you, your choices, it's humanity's choices. Why is our world falling apart? If there's a God, why, why does evil happen in the world? And I tell you why they happen in the world. Because of your choices. I have nothing to do with any of your sin. I'm trying to correct you. I'm trying to lead you. I'm trying to guide you. I'm trying to protect you because I love you. And you never take any of my, of my advice. You never go to church. You never really pray. You never acknowledge me until something completely tragic happens. And in the moment that, some, that, that everything else fails, you finally come to me, but you still don't come to me humble. You come to me with your plans. And so can, can, can you make this happen? Since I went to my mother, my brother, my sister, my, all these different people, dad said no, mom said no, like children. So I'm going to go to my grandpa or my grandfather. I'm going to go to this person or that person or the government so I can finally get a yes. But I tell you, you're not going to get a yes from me. You need to... You need to really think hard about, about your future. You need to really think hard about your eternal goals in life because every single human being will die and you will face me on judgment day. So better to face me now and be prepared for the next life because any day could be your time. You guys are living for the wrong things. You guys worship things. You guys don't love each other. You don't forgive each other. You guys don't love me. I created all the things that are in this world that are good. I'm the last thing on your mind until something bad like this happens. But if you would just listen to me, you never give one thought about me every day you wake up throughout your entire life. And I'm sick of it. But here we are. Now you're going to pray. Now you're going to ask and seek my counsel. But here's my advice to you. Are you going to take my counsel? Or are you going to sit there and try to shift it again? You guys are living in sin. And I love you too much to watch you destroy yourself. You're destroying yourself. Your world is turning out this way because of you. I have given this world to humanity. But those I bless come to me and they listen to me and they obey me. As children are to obey their parents. They know who their God is. Those people I protect. But what about these Christians? They got the coronavirus too. Well, they might want to check their faith. It's not what it appears to be to everyone else. It's what's really inside the heart. And I search the hearts and minds of every person in this world. And I know who loves me. And I know who doesn't. The, uh, the, the American culture 
is just something, the Christian faith is just part of the American culture. You guys don't actually believe it. It's just a way of living. It's not something that's actually transformative in your life, happening within your heart. To the Christian, you say, I'm a Christian too. To the Buddhist, you say, I'm a Buddhist too. To the Hindu, you say, I'm a Hindu too. You have not set your heart apart from me. You're a prostitute for everyone, for every religion, for every idolatry. But I tell you, they're all false gods that you worship. They're all idols. They, don't, they can't walk or talk for themselves. They can't save you from anything. The only person who can save you is Jesus. And I've already sent him. The question is, why won't you receive him? And you already know the answer, just like I know the answer, because of your pride. You love sin more than you love God. You pray to me with your agenda, but you don't pray to me for mine. You already have plans, which you want, but you never ask me about mine. That's my challenge to you. Stop praying to me, asking me to do things for you and start praying to me and asking me what should you do for me? And I don't mean me, Jeremy, I mean God. And actually do it. So I'm gonna end on this. This coronavirus is based on one thing and one thing only. Sin. It's sin. And you know what this sin is? Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. That's why this is happening. Oh, there's a disease. There's a cause and effect for everything, isn't there? Well, this is the cause. The cause is unforgiveness. Now, this is the effect. Coronavirus. Death. If you can't forgive your mother, your brother, your father, whoever, your sister, your neighbor, then you will die in your sin. I have forgiven you for all of your trespasses. Now you should forgive your neighbor. And I don't mean forgive and, and, and say you forgive someone. I mean go to that person, whoever they may be, go to them face to face, and don't justify your point of why you did this, but completely take ownership of it. Take ownership of your error, of your sin. Completely just go, I sinned. I'm sorry. Don't even pray to me until you do that. And he who doesn't do it doesn't, he or she who doesn't do it doesn't have faith. And he or she who does it has faith. Show your faith and I'll show you grace. What's happening is the end of the world. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Jesus was beaten. He bore the sins of the world on his body. But you don't want to forgive your neighbor for a little lie, for a little bit of, oh, they, the way they looked at you, for a little bit of, of, of offense that they did to you. But Jesus was brutally beaten nailed to a cross but you don't want to forgive wow do not pray to the lord your god without a repenting heart i'm not calling humanity to to do anything else i've never been calling humanity to do anything else besides believe in the gospel and accept the, the, the free gift of 
forgiveness. That's the whole gospel. Oh, what about the miracles? What about this? What about all these other things, the knowledge and all the prophecies and all that stuff? I don't care about any of that. Did you not listen to what Paul wrote? If I have knowledge and wisdom and I have faith that can move mountains and I have all these things, but I had not love, then I am nothing. And that key word love means forgive. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever shall believe in him, he's saving us from our sin. He's forgiving us of our sin, of our trespasses against him. The question is, are we going to receive the gift from God? I'm tired, I'm tired of hearing all these prayers when something bad happens. And when I give them advice, they don't want to listen to me. That can't be God. He wants me to forgive. That is me. Stop suppressing the truth. So maybe there's another way. Maybe, there, maybe there's an antidote. Maybe we can figure something out. I don't want to forgive my neighbor. I don't want to forgive my spouse or my ex. I don't want to forgive my boss or my brothers or my sisters or my mother or my father. I don't want to forgive. No, there's another way. There's no other way. There's only one. Forgive each other as Christ Jesus has forgiven you when he bore the sins of humanity and died on that cross. And until you forgive, I will not forgive you. I will not listen to your prayers. God bless.